So we made it, friends. We all made it. Uh, I'm not Somehow. quite sure what else there is to say. I think our our pre-show guesses came out kind of close to the close to the mark. Um, but I don't know, let, let, let me start with you, Sarah. Give me your just thirty thousand foot. Does this does did this debate do anything you think to alter anything in the race? You know, they're going to get a good, decent Trump, Trump fans going to get a good, decent news cycle out of it, because I think that it's a it's a sort of objective win. You know, Vance uh, did well and, and Walls survived. The thing that I'm kind of, you know, you, I struggle all the time with the fact that I always feel like we're underreacting to this particular moment. And on one hand, there's the Sarah part of me that likes that Van or that likes that Walls is kind of the guy who wants to like, he wants to seek common ground. Like you could feel him on stage looking at Vance and being like, no, no, let's find the places where we agree. And like, let's find a nice equilibrium. And I don't want to be a pit bull. I'm not trying to rip your throat out. And that's, there's the part of me that's like, it's nice just to have a debate without Donald Trump on stage, right? To have people discussing issues and like being normal humans to each other. And then there's the part of me that's like, Tim Walls, this guy said he wouldn't certify an election. This guy, J.D. Vance, flips, called Trump a Nazi. America's Hitler. You got ammunition for days, man. Go get him. And look, Walls had, nobody's going to like me saying this, but Walls had that big-eyed, deer-in-the-headlights look for half the debate that just you know, and, and like, and you could see his comfort zone was trying to vibe with Vance, trying to find places where they agreed, trying to find sort of a decent equilibrium. And I respect that as a human being. I long for more as somebody who needed what a blood sweep the leg, Johnny. Yeah, That's man, what Sarah wanted. Yeah. Go get him. And he did all right at the end there on the, on January, the back half was better for him. He found his rhythm. He was okay. I do think no harm, no foul long-term. Sarah, let what? me ask you. I, I'm, I, first of all, I come down on the, on, on the side that I don't think anything really materially matters from this debate. Just like Will and I predicted, I think we'll forget about it in about 48 hours. But if we were to say what were like two moments that would resonate or a line from the debate that would resonate, what would you say is the line? I have mine. I mean, look, if, if, if I think if I'm looking at it, it depends, right? Okay. So right wing media ecosystem tomorrow, yeah. the knuckle headline, that's the Tiananmen square stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. had to have known that was coming and it was a terrible answer. Sure. Terrible. Am I missing something on this? Because it seems like the way to answer that is, yeah, I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. And I was there like, you know, six weeks later than I, yeah. I said it was. And I, I don't know. Sorry. I spoke. Yeah, I think that would be the way to answer it. But I actually don't <laughs> think that's going to... I think... Because nobody the, fucking cares. <laughs> no one cares. I think that we'll be fine in right-wing media ecosystem. We'll talk about it. But I'm talking about, like, larger than that. Is there a line that from this debate, a moment that tomorrow people outside the right-wing echo chamber will talk about? Well, uh, obviously, Vance... I mean, I <clears throat> as we were just saying before, I think that Walls should have hit much harder at the end about Vance yeah. not saying that Trump lost the election, <clears throat> but I think yes. the media will do the job for him. I think yes. the, not, I you. think the MSM will absolutely pick up on that, amplify it, and they'll make it the story that he could have made it on stage and didn't. JD Vance it. did not say he would cert. Did not say he believed Trump lost the election. It's simple. It's straightforward. It's an easy debate that people will pick up on. It demands a follow up question. It came ninety seven minutes into the debate, but frankly, if there's one thing we will remember from this debate. It's that J.D. Vance was asked, point blank, did Trump win or lose? And he couldn't answer the question. And all this other stuff is fodder for the partisans. But I think that one, ultimately, if there is anything that comes out of this debate that gets talked about a couple of days from now, it's going to be that. I wish a fly had landed on somebody's head. Because <laughs> I feel like then we'd have like <laughs> something 
I don't know, something to like round out the debate. Otherwise, it's like they were so Midwestern nice. I, yeah. I'm sorry. I gotta ask you guys. At the the presidential debate, Donald Trump said that he won the election. Right. I mean, like, so why would it matter? That, you know what I'm saying? Like, There's JD something. Vance. Like, yeah. why would it be a news story that JD Vance won't say that Trump lost when Trump, the actual candidate himself, happily affirmatively said, "Yes, I won." Remember really, they, they even did one? that question yeah, with the because walk back. because yeah. as Wall said, Mike Pence is the reason that Trump failed in that coup attempt. I mean, you know, there there might have been a couple of other guardrails after that, but we didn't have to get to that point because Pence stood up, and as Wall said, that's why Pence isn't here now. I think Wall should have hit that much harder. J.D. Vance is here because he said he would do whatever Trump wants in that moment. That he would allow the uh, the alternate, the fake electors, that Pence wouldn't allow. Didn't hit it hard enough, but that, you know, I, I think that was adequately at least exposed. Agree. AB. Yeah, I just, um, you know, I'm not going to get past, I don't care that they didn't fact check. I'm not going to get past the moderators not saying, these are your exact words, Senator Vance, about what, explain to us what it would mean to just debate alternate electors in defiance of the of the will of the voters after certification on December 14th of 2020 of the election results. I mean, I, that, that, I mean, I'm sorry, it is absolutely disqualifying. And the fact that they didn't bring it up and then Waltz couldn't is still making me shake. Maybe I'm deranged, but I find it, I'm, I'll never get over it. It's, that's, that was the, that is the headline of J.D. Vance. It's why he got, the running me job was because he is willing to bring the whole house down. Yeah, I'm trying to institutional crisis. I'm trying to think of like what's the story where you sell your soul, but you get like to be a very slick guy with bright blue eyes. <laughs> like that's the exchange. The picture um, of Dorian Gray. It's sort of like that, right? Like it feels uh like. If you know a lot about what's going on, you're watching J.D. Vance and you're thinking, this is what you did it all for, man. I hope you're getting I hope you're getting what you want out of this because you are a talent. And this is where Trump corrupts everything so completely. Right. J.D. Vance could have been a talented. He is a talented politician who is a bad person, um, but who clearly has like some good gut level instincts. Uh, but it's been so perverted by Donald Trump and by trying to sort of twist himself to be Donald Trump's guy uh, that it's like, what does it profit a man to win a debate but to lose his soul? Right. And I would say this, like the J.D., his ability, I don't know if you want to call it shape shifting or whatever you want to call it, his political skill, but depending on the audience he's in to act in a different way, you know, up and coming you know, young conservative writer who was like very comfortable in democratic crowds and talking about Ohio, then turned into like a, you know, right wing aspirant for the Senate and now like a MAGA blogosphere hero. And then tonight in front of a different audience uh, can turn back into someone who's got this Midwestern nice sensibility constantly. 2016 Marco Rubio, but a little harder on immigrants. Totally. Right. And constantly, That's what he and constantly, was today. constantly complimenting and saying, you know, I appreciate what Tim Walls is saying. There's some good halfway decent ideas there. Like we can get some common ground here. Like that's not the guy who exists on these YouTube shows. Like it's just a different human being. Now that you can call Talk, it. If, he if said the words, like the epidemic of gun violence. Have you ever heard a, no. a Republican say the phrase epidemic of gun violence? No. no. He said you that talk, Donald talk, Trump talk, saved Obamacare. Talked about his friend who got an abortion. I mean, this is all stuff that we'd be like, whoa, this yeah. is like. And how that abortion saved her life, right? Yeah. Her life would have been destroyed if she hadn't had that abortion. And he was like, yeah, I love you, sister. And uh, it said that that the Republican Party had a lot to do to win people's trust back on, on abortion. I mean. <laughs> Amazing stuff. So this is, yeah. this is the thing about Vance is that. Like, this, you know, he's like this here. And then he goes on the Jack Murphy podcast and he's like, man, these fucking old crones who don't menstruate anymore. They're uh, they're they're evolutionarily no longer necessary. 
Yeah. <laughs> because he's trying to like fit in with Curtis Yarvin. And I, uh, I don't know, man. I looked at this. There were, there were like five different JVD bands things. You know, how would you find, he was like all in on climate change and the environment. And was like, yes. And we got to save, we got to save the climate within, with protectionism. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the economy. But it's a, uh, I don't know. I no, if you came away, if you had never met these guys before, never read a thing about them, never heard them speak, you would come away thinking, okay, JD Vance is for child care or help help for child care. He's comfortable with abortion, just wants you know a few restrictions. He's relatively moderate on the environment. Uh, I mean, like somewhat sensible, I suppose, on a few of these other matters. It's like he would seem to you like a, a like a kind of a weird, um, you know, combination of ideologies mixed in a lab. And that's just not who he's been on the trail. And that's why I think ultimately by the end, when it was distilled to sort of the purest question, would you have, you know, certified the election? Do you believe Trump won? And you can't obfuscate like that. And you can't shape shift. That's when he was at his weakest. Yeah, I, I would say to, to agree with some of the stuff about Vance, if I had to predict one thing that will change out of tonight, it is J.D. Vance's favorable rating. I think he substantially yeah. improved it. Um, it. It will it will show improvements. I'm not at all convinced it will translate to Trump. In fact, part of the weird experience of tonight was like the civility of the debate, which I take as this is what happens when normal people appear on a stage instead of this lunatic Trump. I mean, you don't have a, this raging narcissism. And and you can have a you can have this kind of debate. Um, I do think, in defense of what I assume will be the MSM takeaway, which is what Sam and I were discussing about January sixth, the reason why that is a legitimate thing for the media to focus on, and not just a liberal bias, is if you look at everything discussed in this debate, and ask yourself on which of these questions is the vice president important. There are very few of those. There, one of them was, what happens if the president dies? Are you qualified? That, that was brought up. But the other one is, you, uh, you're the person at the end who, the, who, who Trump has already proved he would turn to, to try to overturn the results of an election, even if it's not him as the candidate next time. If he is the president, he has a vice president. You know, he's obviously chose Vance for this reason. He didn't choose, Pence is gone for this reason. And so if you're a normal person saying, why does the vice presidency matters? That answer on January 6th and the election is the most important one. So I, uh, I, I, I agree that Vance probably helped himself with his own favorability ratings with the general public. I think he probably didn't help himself with Trump. I'm going to write about that as soon as we get off the show. Can we talk really? like very briefly about walls? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sarah. Really? You do, why? Tell me why you think that. I mean, what? You don't want to read my newsletter tomorrow? You got you to get it out right now so that I can save you the three minutes tomorrow. Um, uh, because he was boring. He was polite. He didn't say that Trump won. Like he dodged the question. That's interesting. But he didn't say that Trump won. He didn't say MAGA at all. And he, he looked like he was selling J.D. Vance futures at least as much as he was selling Donald Trump today. And, you know, like, what does Donald Trump hate more than anything else in the world? People making money off of him. That's what J.D. Vance was doing tonight. I also thought it was very J. funny. J.D. Vance that, was making money off of Donald Trump. I also thought it was very funny in telling that Trump, in the middle of the goddamn Pete debate, Rose. put out a tweet about Pete Rose. <laughs> like, yeah. Clear as if he just here. died. Yeah. Pete Rose just died. Um, all right, Amy. So we've thought we've spent enough on JD Vance. Uh, Tim Walls was he an acquired taste for you by the end, or was he just a Midwestern yeah. doofus, or uh, like you know, I, was he yeah. kind of nice because he's real? Like, what, what give me your Tim Walls takes? I'm in between, it. he grew on me. I mean, I, I don't know what he's talking about, but he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and it, it's just, it, it's really hard to listen to. He's beyond clunky. He's a spouse. <laughs> but there was just a vibe of like, he's a real guy. And it, it is just, he's just very authentic. And there was, I don't think he's adorable, but he's authentic. And there was just something by the end, like, I know he sounded like he was in a gubernatorial debate 
you know, to, to run for re-election in Minnesota. And it was all, you know, really like boring, but, but he, I think he, I think if I would really be interested, I was listening at one point, he was just flying off the, I mean, just tripping over words, just really, really a mess. And I was thinking, I would love to see those dial groups right now. And there's someone is doing a dial group tonight. Someone did. Yeah. And, and I bet there is better voter response for Tim Waltz than we think. It just started to sort of, it just, he just, grew, he just grows on you. And again, you have no idea what he's saying, but it's, it's not, it's, it's incomprehensible at times, but it's like, this guy knows his policies. He loves it. The veterans home loan, the, it, the 12%, the 19, it, he just gets into it and he loves being governor and he, no, and he's, he's really, um, if you were doing a gut check, as I said, you know, a while ago, and you just sort of swooped in and you're like still an undecided voter, you just feel like, okay, this guy can be vice president. He can be in the background and just like never do anything, you know, not lead the way and, and just be her good number two. And he's like a real person. I think Will summarized it when he said the teacher versus the prosecutor. I mean, he's like, right. the, he's the teacher, right? Sarah, what'd you think? You look dis positively dismissive. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think walls was very good. Uh, and everyone's going to get mad at me for saying so. And I can't tell you, I just like, he wasn't good and he never, he didn't hit hard when we needed him to. I, I do think what people say debates don't matter when they feel like they've lost. And I said this at the beginning that I do think this matters because I think that people, first of all, we are dealing with one of the closest elections ever. So every, there are, there are so few inflection points. This is one of the last ones. Um, people don't know much about walls and they don't know much about Vance. And so we'll see what the numbers look like in terms of people who tuned in. Um, I see people like, look, was JD Vance an inveterate liar defending Donald Trump? Yeah. Is he smarmy? Did he walk? Did he try to walk all over the female moderators? Did he did he talk like a completely different person from who he is? Yeah, sure. But he was better. He had a better command of the issues. And, you know, Walls. He's a better debater. Did he have better? Like, I don't think he came off as wonky as Walls. I thought he was just more skilled at parrying and pivoting and that that was very evident. Well, maybe, but maybe, maybe I'm way, wrong about that. Well, you maybe the way to, maybe the way to think about this is that walls walls, Walls's failure was in the opportunities he missed. Yes. Right. I think this is right. Right. Keep like going. I could, let me just do a quick, a quick yeah. lift. Like obviously he should have come well more prepared for the Tiananmen square thing. We've established that. Yes. During the abortion segment, um, he never once mentioned uh, the failed Senate vote to protect and pay for IVF. Didn't come up. Vance missed the vote. Could have mentioned that. Uh, when the discussion was on guns and J.D. Vance said something about we need to make doors lock better. which and stronger you know, windows. And stronger windows. Mm -hmm. Never once did he turn around and say, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, like, what, what are you talking about? Um, when Vance said Donald Trump saved Obamacare. I mean, that we talked about that. But then on top of that, somehow he defended, Walls defended the individual mandate, which actually doesn't exist anymore. It was in the original concept, but it was invalidated by the courts. Um, there's just a number of opportunities, like stuff left on the table that he could have done. And that's, you know, because he's not a good debater. Uh, and so in that sense, this debate does matter because there was opportunity costs associated with it. It doesn't negate AB's point that for a swath of the electorate, you know, he probably came off as reasonable and nice and, you know, compassionate and caring of these issues. But that doesn't, you know, those two things are not in contrast with one another. 
All right, round the corn, last yeah. word, because right. we got to save Wait. something oh, here oh, for oh. next level tomorrow. Yeah, we'll want to we'll, 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 go. We'll, we'll, we're okay, going to wait. We got to weigh in on Walls here. Um, first of all, in Walls's defense, he did say the best, my favorite line from Tim Walls tonight. Lit, I never thought I'd hear this from a Democrat. My shotgun was in my car so I could pheasant hunt after my football practice. Tim Walls <laughs> was there to deliver that line, and he did. <clears throat> Congratulations. But I want to cover for Sarah. Sarah, you will not be the most anti Walls person here on the panel. A um, couple of things. Visually, these are visuals. Tim Walls belongs in a flannel shirt or overalls or whatever the hell it is. Tim That's Wall right. in a suit close up was bad, looked bad. I mean, he's been in a suit going, doing a speech on a podium. This was close up in a suit, looked terrible, looked like he didn't belong in it. Second thing, he just looked tight. The guy looked tight, um, you know, comma looked tight at the beginning of her debate. Walls kind of looked tight throughout. Third thing and the most important thing, obviously he was coached like Harris to try to look thoughtful or serious or something while his opponent was speaking. He turned his head, but Harris, Harris, again, this is a prosecutor. Harris really nailed it. She had expressions. She's turning her face. She's not speaking, but she's expressing dismay, surprise, disgust, disbelief, incredulity. She was great at that. Walls was totally passive. There were times, I swear to you, he looked like Joe Biden, just a flat face. That's right. uh, if, if I had to be really <laughs> unkind, the phrase that came to mind is apprehensive rodent. That's what I felt like Walls was projecting sometimes with that face of his. Sorry, AB. Oh. And so I, I just thought that was, he, he was coached but could not deliver it the way that she did. And I worry that throughout the evening, he just didn't look strong the way that she did. Yeah. All right, AB, last word from you. It was really boring. Um, I, I mean, I, it really, it really was because Vance is a pretty boy, fakest faker ever. And and you know, like Sam said, if you just stumbled upon it, you'd have been like, "Who's this lovely guy with his nice eyes and his sweet little smile?" Um, and so he, they kept it so civil, um, he, but it was so. It, it, uh, anyway, I don't know what else to say. I, I, it just it was it was like frustrating but boring at the same time. It's it's such a strange mix. Like I just can't put it into words. I bet the he's Germans have a word for that. Time. Yeah, he's bullshitting the whole time, and Walt is like literally just missing like ball after ball. It was just it was just so strange. Sam, I'm gonna be a little bit sort of weird and counterintuitive here, but I really enjoyed it in a weird way. Like I you know I know there's so much at stake here and, and obviously there, everything you guys have said is totally valid. Um, but it was refreshing to a degree. There are parts where it wasn't refreshing, obviously, but it was refreshing to a degree to watch people like not just rip each other to shreds and to like yeah. talk about, you know, policy disagreements, but also commonalities to randomly bring up the, you know, how the Finns have, you know, dealt with gun violence. Like what the fuck, where did that come from? Um, you know, things like that, where it's just like, oh, wow, there is the capacity to talk to each other without just being completely vicious and nasty. Now was, do, do I wish things had gone differently? Do I think there are missed opportunities? Of course. Um, but it reminded me a little bit that like, there's a way to do this that can be different than what Trump has prescribed to us. And uh, hopefully we can find our way back there in the future. Sarah, give me your closing thoughts, but like save some of the good stuff for tomorrow because we're taping again in nine hours. Yeah, and, and, and I'm glad we are because I, I would like to sleep on this a little bit because I had a lot of different feelings about this. I'm watching the chat a little bit and people are like, Walls did amazing. Walls did great. And you guys are so wrong. And like, maybe no, no. Um, but I, I do. But here's where here's where I, I'll give whether it's the chat or um, I do think that. I'm always a little bit interested or obviously I'm interested in what how voters perceive these things versus professional pundits. Right. All of us are used to, and to some degree, adjudicating debates between Yaleys and smart people and how do they do in their facial expressions. And I think that we oftentimes grade on like our own types of curves around like 
what do we view as good? And like, I, I just think that J.D. Vance, the way that we would grade a debate was objectively good tonight. Um, being able to sort of pivot away from places where um, he's not strong and pivot into places where he's stronger and he pretended to be a different person than he is. And Walls is the person that he is. And you saw that. And so sometimes he was uncertain. Sometimes he was passionate. He talked to a lot about Minnesota because that's what he knows. Um, and like that didn't translate great to a national debate. I do think, though, I'm not sure, A, that it matters that much because I do think Walls kind of fought it to a place where like it didn't seem like a catastrophe. It's not like anybody watched this and says, Walls should be in charge of nothing. This is <laughs> terrible. Like, you know, like right. it was fine. Um, and also, um, I do wonder if just sort of average people get a little bit like, I don't know. J.D. Vance maybe seemed a little... I don't know if people will find him smarmy. I find him smarmy because I know what he really thinks. And so I know that that was an act. No, you don't. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I know that I know that he's like nailing jello to a wall in terms of having actual opinions. And, you know, if Trump hadn't corrupted him so completely, there might be a, a place for J.D. Vance in our politics. But he is unworthy and unfit based on what we know about him. But like, I'm thinking about the person who comes to this cold. I'm trying to gather as much string as I can about who these people are. And if I just watched that cold, I would be like, boy, this guy seems really smart. And the other He's guy great. seems a little out of his He's going to be president someday. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, the backdrop really brought out his eyes. <laughs> uh, and it played, you know, he's wearing mascara or whatever he does with his eyes, gets his Sephora points. Um, I, I dislike, I loathe JD Vance with an intensity that I'm not sure you can measure, uh, because he's so inauthentic and I think walls was authentic, but I just, I'm, I'm not sure how people will interpret performance is performance and, and JD Vance turned in a better performance, but I do think, but again, I don't think it was catastrophic, so it's probably all fine. George W. Bush somehow won his debates against Al Gore because people just liked Bush, right? I mean, that was that was like people just were like, yeah, I like that guy. Yeah, I don't know. People Sometimes are mysterious. Yeah, guys, thank you for enduring this horrible, horrible baton death march of a debate <laughs> together with <laughs> us. Uh, please follow the channel, hit like, go over to the bulwark if you haven't already, and sign up to get all the free stuff that we give away, which is almost all of it. I don't even know why people pay us anything. Um, you know, we lock like a tiny, tiny bit of stuff. Most of it we give away because we're in this for the mission. We're trying to save democracy and we want you to come along and do it with us. Guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Good luck, America. Good luck. <laughs>